reading by mercy of Radha Mohan and Gurudev and Vaishnavas we are reading Vilapa Kusumanjali by Raghunath Das Goswami uh, verse 12 with commentaries of Ananta Das Babaji translation O Kalyani auspicious beautiful girl when will the jingling of your ankle bells that is like an ocean of nectar rasa cure my deafness once again o kalyani auspicious or beautiful girl when will the jingling of your ankle bells that is like an ocean of nectarian rasa cure my deafness notes only a faint reflection of the illumination of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami's love in separation from Swamini is revealed through the syllables of this Vilapa Kusumanjali. Krishna himself descended to earth as Gaura to experience his own sweetness and the sweetness of Shimati Radhika's love for him. For this, he, Krishna, became Virahi, experiencing separation from himself and taught all the sadakas of the world that one must first experience viraha before being able to relish milan meeting in this way he increases the prema sindhu ocean of love of his devotees Shilaragunadas Goswami also relishes Shiradika's sweetness through Viraha. Although he is her internally perfect maidservant. Yeah. So we can stop a little bit here and to say and share something about this paragraph, which is introduction of other parts of commentary. And here is mentioned in a very simple way the main conclusions of Gaudiya Vaishnava, Siddhanta we say. And this conclusion brings devotee to the level if he properly understands and accepts this conclusion that he wants to enter in this deep secret of Gaudiya Vaishnavas, ultimate goal. So it's very nicely said that what we are listening now from Raghunath Das Goswami, it's just reflection, little reflection, reflection from his heart. But this tiny, faint reflection is sufficient to illuminate the heart of sincere sadaka. So, to open the heart to this reflection which is emanating from Raghunata's heart, also from the hearts of all our Rasik Acharyas, including Anantadas Babaji here, requires proper tuning. We should tune our hearts and minds and all existence to the hearts, minds, and all existence of the Acharyas. So the target, the goal of Sadaka is to receive at least little, teeny reflection 
from their hearts. Then heart will be illuminated with pure bhakti and also with pure manjari bhav. This is the goal of sadaka. And it's very interesting that in the words, Raghunath is praying, I want to hear your the sound, the jingling of your ankle bells. So in that case, I will cure, this sound will cure my deafness. So I want to become, in other words, I want to become deaf for all other things, but only to hear your sweet jingling. This sound will illuminate my heart, and this sound of your ankle bells will purify my heart, prepare my heart, that I can practice my manjari bhav sadhana very deeply. If I don't cure my heart and my ears, I will not be able to properly listen. Shravanam is a very imp- first and very impo- important process for attaining ultimate goal. But it's not easy to properly practice and apply this shravana or listening. Many coverings which are coming from materialistic way of thinking, from materialistic consciousness, many, many coverings of ignorance, especially ignorance, are covering the heart, and because of that, ears are not able to properly hear what is really written or said. And in our experience, we all have experience, that for many of conditioned beings, is very difficult even to repeat what was said. It's even difficult to repeat what we said. And what to say to really understand the deep meaning of the words. And I think that many devotees who are in the mood of seva, of speaking, are in the similar situations when someone approached them and said, you said this and that and that and that. And you are listening and you cannot believe that this person catch this kind of meaning of your words. And why it's happening? Because the process of hearing is from the mental level. And the mental, the mind level, is covered with mode of ignorance, the mostly. But the proper listening, proper hearing, is going through the soul. And we say sometimes through the heart. And this, and when this process of shravana is done properly, then all other process will follow much more smoothly and spontaneously without many obstacles. But the obstacles are coming because the shravana was not performed properly with full heart. And Gurudev many times said, and some of our acharyas have forgot their names, but you remember the different kinds of listening. The most common listening, way of listening, is that person is listen in one ear, through one ear, and is going out on another ear. This is most common listening. Another level of listening is that person is trying to be concentrated, focused on his listening, but in the same time, he is doing selections in his mind because he is listening with the mind. I like this. I don't like this. I agree with this. I don't agree with this. He makes selections. So in the same time, he is listening from some source outside who is talking, but in the same time, he has a dialogue, inner dialogue with himself, with his own mind. And this is also very, very common way 
of Shravana. But these two ways are not bringing person in the right tune with someone who is talking. This is mind kind of listening, independent listening, and the result of this is that wrong conclusions, wrong way of thinking, and automatically wrong way of practicing devotional life. So Raghunath here is praying, I want to listen your the sound of your jingling bells from your ankle bells. But we sadakas should first learn and tune ourselves to listen Ragunatas jingling of his words. When we really absorb our heart in the jingling of syllables of each word of Ragunath, then pain, tiny reflection from his heart will start to appear in the heart of Sadaka. So the art of listening is the most important item even in Vaidhi Bhakti, and what to speak about Raga Bhakti. In Vaidhi Bhakti, is very important to properly listen because person has to properly practice what is said or what is written. But in Raga Bhakti, is even more important because through proper listening of the words, we have opportunity to receive the emotions from the hearts of Rasik devotees. Without receiving emotions from Raganuga or Rasik devotees who are already attained perfection, this eagerness which is necessary for Raga will not appear. So the task, the target of sadakas are to really try their best it's not easy, but we have to try our best to tune our heart and ears to relish the words of Rasik devotees. And we cannot do it because we are conditioned, more or less. But the point is, when Rasik devotee see the sincere endeavor of this sadaka, he will give the kripa. He will give the kripa. And suddenly, sadaka, normal bhakta, nothing some super hero, super bhakta, will start to properly understand, properly relish, and automatically he will continue to properly practice what he properly heard. Otherwise, we will have always our own conceptions, and it's very difficult to be rid of it. And most of the time we will spend just to remove these obstacles instead of accepting and immediately start to properly practice and relish, which is most important thing. Then faint reflection, faint reflection of words of Raghunath, which is described here in this Vilapa Kusumanjali will slowly start to illuminate our heart. How? By Guru's Kripa. Without Guru Kripa, we cannot understand Acharya, words of Acharyas. Guru Kripa is giving us, us connection to understand and feel the words of Rasik devotees. For example, here, Kripa or Fanantadas Babaji is giving us this ability to relish and properly understand the words of Raghunata. Can you imagine that we have just these words? <laughs> simple, <laughs> simple words of Raghunata. What should we understand? But also, we need explanation of Ananta Das Babaji words, because if we have just his words, we will also not understand completely. So for that, we need explanations of our Gurudev. And then by practicing bhajan, all these words which we properly heard 
will bloom in the our in our souls, and this blooming will make a soul uh, in his natural position. It will put the soul in his natural position, like a maid servant of Shimatiratara. The coverings in the heart of of Tamogun is blocking proper hearing. And one more thing I would like to add is that in that way, person never or have a very difficult, uh, so much difficulties to accept position of servant at all. But someone who accepted, I am, am servant and I want to become more closer to my Ishtadev, he will start to tune his heart and ears to really properly hear. Then understanding and relishing will come. I know, Baba. Yeah. Please, Udavaji. I, no, I don't just... want to interrupt your beautiful no. meditation. <laughs> Please. The, what you're meditating here connects so nicely to... Um, a meditation that Guru Dev has been having these last weeks about the relation between knowledge and science. In the English language, we have the two words, listen and hear. And in German language, too, I don't know for Croatia or for Japanese. But listening is to hearing like knowledge is to science. When we listen, we collect the information. You know, my, my iPhone can listen to you. And I listen back in it, but only by surrendering to the spiritual substance of the sound, like you're so nicely describing, can we hear. And the same goes in Gurudev's words. We can collect all the knowledge we like, read all the books, memorize all the shastras, the sutras. And if we don't surrender to the unspoken, to the feeling, to the source, to the purpose, to the relation, to the divine, then we understand nothing. Done. Thank you, Devaj. So this is the science of Bhaktiras. And it's not that everyone can become scientist. He has to receive the mercy of those who are already on that position. Because the science, especially the science of Bhakti Ras, is the science which is delivered above. This is the kripa. This is the mercy. Delivered from the above to the persons who sow absolute truth, who relish absolute truth. Tatva darshini. They sow. They had the direct darshan of real reality. So we need their help and we need to connect with themselves, and like you said very nicely, if we really surrender to that person or persons, then the process of hearing will be much more spontaneous, smoothly, natural. Because I surrender to someone whom I love, not because I'm forced. If I surrender to someone who if I'm forced to surrender to someone, this is not complete surrendering. But if I surrender to someone whom I love and I have complete faith, then automatically with my eyes I will listen to him, not for only with my ears. With all my senses, like you said, what is behind, which kind of feeling is with behind his simple sentence. And when Baba is writing here, only faint reflection of illumination of Raguna Das Goswami, love in separation from Swamini is revealed in Vilapa Kusumajari. I will just stop all my senses and try to enter with feelings in this statement. Because everything is said in this simple scientific <laughs> sentence. Everything. All Vedas are in this sentence. The goal is in this sentence. Sambada is this sentence. 
Abhideya is in this sentence. But if I have my own conception, I like this, I don't like that, I, I agree with this, and I agree. this is not proper listening. So we should learn. It's okay that we are not able to listen properly because this is our conditioned nature. It's not something, but it's something which we have to try at least the best as we can to change. Then mercy, we will be able to receive mercy, which is already here. And here, yes, please. We can continue or? Y yes. Ah, okay. Can... So we continue reading. Sri Radhika always acts for Krishna's welfare. Therefore, she is named Kalyani here. Nanda Maharaj daily feeds millions of Brahmanas for Krishna's Kalyana. And Mother Yashoda gets up early every morning to pronounce mantras for Krishna's protection before he goes out into the forest. In Skanda Purana, we find Sri Krishna's con constitutionally transcendental name is the fruit of the vines of all the Vedas. This name, his name, is sweeter than sweet and more auspicious than all that is auspicious. But Sri Radhika is auspicious even for him. So we can see here the difference. Someone who is attracting all the worlds, someone who is the source of all different, unlimited forms of Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayans, to whom everyone is worshipping, this kind of person, the source of all these persons, are so sweet. And Baba is saying here, Krishna's constitutional transcendental name. He didn't say Narayana's constitutional transcendental name. He said only Krishna's name is constitutional. Sarva avatar. He is the source of all avatars, source of everything. His name is so sweet. Im Vrindavan. And everyone is relishing his name. But he is always longing in a very greedy way for Sri Radhika. And he is so much longing for her that the way how he is chanting her name, calling her, is fascinating. And it's very clear, understandable, it's very understandable that Radhika's name is even more sweeter than Krishna's name. And in that way, she is Kalyani. She is giving him mercy. He is giving mercy to others. But he also needs someone from whom he will receive the mercy. And Krishna's spe specific position is that he is always eager to receive the mercy <laughs> from his loving devotees, especially Shimati Radharani. He wants to receive. He wants to tune himself to the heart of his loving devotees. This is his unique position in Vraja. He wants to tune himself, his heart. And he's showing also his example for us, Sadaka, what we should have to do. We should tune our hearts to the hearts of loving devotees of Shimate Radhara. Because her name her appearance, her qualities are the most, most, most supreme auspicious. And like Guru Dev, I remember maybe Udavaji and Jayanandaji, they also remember many times Guru Dev said, This Kalyani is merciful. It means merciful, 
but it means kala, always. There is no any interruption in the flow of her mercy. She is always 24-7, constantly, because she is the embodiment also of mercy and auspiciousness. I you hear Sad? Sad, okay. Okay. Would someone like to share more? Okay. So, we will continue reading. So, Sri Radhika is auspicious even for Krishna. This can be nicely illustrated by the following song of Govinda Das. The song describes Radha and Krishna's Purva Raga, beginnings of love. One duty, girl messenger, came to Sri Radha to tell her how much Krishna is in love with her. Radhe, when Subal gives Krishna a golden garland of champaka flowers, his mind trembles and tears of passionate love flow from Krishna's. Oh, beautiful girl, your form always awakens great love in his heart. Day and night he murmurs Vrishabhanu Nandini without saying anything else out of confusion. Although hundreds of thousands of girls speak sweet words to Krishna He does not listen to them, even in dreams. He can only pronounce the first syllable of your name, Ra. But, out of ecstasy, he cannot pronounce the other one, Dha. His eyes carry streams of tears. That jewel of jewel of men rolls on the ground. Who can this this express? Govinda Das submits this news about Kanu, Krishna, to your lotus feet. Know that he feels miserable and that only your grace, Kalyana, can destroy Kanu's suffering. Rade, rade. We can hear mm. example and symptom and effect of Radharani's auspiciousness. Her auspiciousness are putting Krishna in completely intoxicated state of consciousness and emotions. So many girls are there, but no one of them can put him in such state of intense love. And because she is so beautiful and sweet and full of indescribable, sublime qualities, she is so auspicious to Krishna that she is awakening constantly new and new emotions in his heart. This is real auspiciousness. When some is so beautiful, so full of good qualities, so sweet, that just by remembering him or by pronouncing his name or her name, it brings that person in intoxicating, completely mad level of feelings, consciousness, and so on. So the same effect Radhika has on Krishna because her love is focused like a laser only on him. And it said before how Nanda Baba or Yashoda, they were doing always whatever they did, they did for Gopal's 
Krishna's beneficial benefit, sorry, and all their thoughts, feelings, and service act dealings are so auspicious for him because they are focused in loving parental vatsalya relationship with him. So we should look. This is the reason why we sadakas should approach this kind of devotees, perfect devotees, to receive their one-pointed, one-pointedness, which are constantly illuminated their hearts. And we have here beautiful example. How Raghunath is also one-pointed, directed only on Swamini. And the beautiful thing is that he or she, like a Tulsi, whatever is doing is so auspicious for Radhika. Maid servant, whatever is doing, whatever is thinking, whatever is talking, feeling, is always wants to become auspicious for Shimati Radhika. This is Prima Bhakti. Without any other motives. And someone who really has sincerely has one goal in life, Prayojan, and that is the Prem. He wants to practice this kind of bhajan. And this kind of bhajan requires pure heart. Without hidden motives, different kinds of materialistic desires, and so on and so on. And this pure, purifying the heart, purification of the heart, sorry, this purification of the heart is starting with the proper shravana. So again, we are coming on the beginning. How important is the proper shravana? Not from the mind, not from the senses, but deeply, deeply from the heart and deeply from the soul. And for that, sadaka needs, like Udavaji said, surrendering, loving surrendering, and also certain dose of humility. Then Guru and Acharyas from above are infusing more and more, more, more heart of that sadaka with kripa. And heart illuminates them. So Krishna's heart is all here completely illuminated with Ra. <laughs> Just the one first part, first syllable of Radhika's name. Her, his heart is completely illuminated. He cannot finish the other part of Da. He is fainting. And if we relish this, then our heart will bloom. And our heart will become soft. And the more heart is soft, ego is vanishing the more. And real identity is blooming. More crystal, more crystal, and more crystal. Then sadaka will be deaf for all other materialistic or even spiritual subjects which are not helping him to attain his Manjari Bhav goal. Please, Jayanandaji, help this poor person. Yeah, yeah very, so very beautiful Gauranga Sundaraj explanation. So I just relishing your word. And uh, so, Shurabhanam, you explain very nicely. And uh, especially my feeling is like this. Raga Bhakti means like Krishna, still the mood of, uh, Gurudev or like Torasi Manjari. And if we could accept their feeling, this Raga Bhakti is successful. And if we become some ego or some, some unfortunate thing, we could not accept, the Raga Bhakti may hamper. So you explain very nicely, Radhe Radhe. Mercy, Maharaj, 
even this fool can say something to try to please devotees. One morning, Radharani sees Krishna with the signs of Chandravali's love-making on his body. Oh my God. <laughs> so she <laughs> becomes angry with him and refuses to speak with him. Her sakis tell her, Radhe, the whole of Vraja is miserably suffering because of your stubborn half towards Krishna. Everyone is unhappy except you. <laughs> he, who is the life of the life of Vraja, rolls on the ground and has given up eating and sleeping out of misery. He has become weak and skinny, seeing his condition. All the moving and immoving, non-moving creatures of Raj are also loudly crying. Only you are happy, giving milk to snake of your pig. Is that auspicious? That's not auspicious. Give up your pick out of separation. Sri Raghunadas says, You are my Kalyani. So it's now that Radhika is only auspicious to Krishna with all her mood, different waves of moods expressions of her feelings, even with angerness, she is so auspicious to her maidservants because they, relishing her angerness, and this is so sweet, that brings Manjaris in complete ecstasy. And this conversation between gopis, friends, girlfriends of Radhika, is so relevant for Manjaris because they are witnessing this and this kind of kata exchange of different words should be relished in a proper way Manjaris will relish the same conversation in one way and those who are fixed in their sake balls, they will relish this same conversation same words in their own bhav. So it depends from which bhav we want to listen and relish this kind of conversation. If we read, if we listen again properly, we should immediately catch the differences between bhavas and if we are fixed in our bhav, situated in our bhav, it doesn't need to be perfect in our bhav, but just be situated. We will immediately listen from our angle of manjaris or angles of sakhi. Depends on each of us. This is my just change. So from Raghunath's point of view, from manjaris point of view, Radhika is Kalyani, so auspicious, so beautiful when she is in a mood of man. Not only is Sri Radhika auspicious for Sri Krishna, she is auspicious to the whole world because she gives joy to the world as God's pleasure potency of which the essence is prema, love. Radha gives that transcendental loving ecstasy to all the devotees and in this way sustains their lives. So every devotee who wants to attain any relationship with Krishna, 
or with Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan. He needs a mercy of Hladini Shakti. Because this Hladini Shakti, when entering the heart of devotee, is helping devotee that his inner love, pure love, appears in his heart. And when this prema appears because of intervention of Hladini Shakti, devotee is able to serve with pure love. Without intervention of Hladini Shakti or Radhika, no one can serve purely any Ishtadi. So to try to approach God or Krishna without his love we can say it's mission, mission impossible. Here. At least little love, Anu Prem, has to enter in the heart of devotee. And when this Prem enters in the heart of devotee, Ishtadev becomes also attracted to that devotee. So this is the exchange of love this is the exchange of in loving relationship in devotional service. But intervention of Radharani is the essence because the prema is coming and are becoming infused in the heart and illuminated the heart. Heart which is not illuminated at least with the ray of prema, rati, cannot relish completely devotional service. So this is why Jananda Maharaj were talking, especially in the beginning, I remember, of our Zooms, about these three types of sadhana, uh, three types of devotional practice, sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti, and prema bhakti. And this bhava bhakti or rati is the goal for sadaka. Because on that stage, first ray, first drops of prema, by the mercy of Hadini Shakti, appears in the heart and starts to attract, attract beloved Ishtadev. And this then ecstasy, which is coming, which is a result of this first ray of prema, is becoming more condensed, 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 and ultimately bloom on the other levels of prayer. So all verses, especially here in Vilapa Kusumanjali, which Raghunath was writing, are from that level of Bhav or Rati. And in that level, he had vivid visions, very detailed, visions, and also Baba, who is giving this kind of commentaries, explaining his words, he did it through his own vivid visions. And whatever Mahajans are talking, they are real scientists, because they saw the truth. They are not speculated about truth. They are Tattva Darshanis. Can you a little bit to share? Can you hear? No, no, hear. Can you hear? Yes, I hear now. Okay. Uh, I want to share a little bit. Please. So, Gorang Sundara explained very, very beautifully, nicely. And, uh, Ananta Das Bawaji Maharaji was described in Prema Bhakti Chandrika. Bhakti is combine, sorry, little bit. <laughs> Bhakti is a combination is Sambit Shakti and uh, Fradini Shakti. So Sambit Shakti means consciousness to know. And Fradini Shakti is like, uh, say, giving. My feeling is material energy is like taking. Material consciousness is taking, taking, taking. And Fradini Shakti is like giving, giving, giving. And what is giving? Giving love. So, and if we worship only Krishna, then just consciousness, no action, or maybe less action. But uh, to, to bhakti means 
to g u r u d e v say loving in action means we want to give something, we want to offer something. Then offering and giving then some displication coming from our Ishta. So therefore, eh, Goranga Sundara ji say explain every, everybody we need Radharani. Every worship, even Narayan, Narayan worship, we need Radhika. Because, because give us, Radhika is pleasure giving potency. So Radhika give us this pleasure. And why devotee is very dear? Because devotee giving to the Ishta, giving to love, giving to a feeling. And this feeling is increasing is Baba Bhakti. So, our sadhana bhakti is goal is to feel, to giving love. So therefore, uh, by the bhakti is not enough because feeling is not enough. So, therefore, Pabupada explain living entity is normal condition is in the frani, in the pleasure giving potency. So, This, uh, slowly, slowly, by the mercy of Guru Dev and other、uh, Vaishnavas, we are slowly, slowly understanding this what is Fradini Shakti. And Guru Dev recently,、uh, explained, uh, the absolute truth. So maybe I may share this morning or yes, also yesterday, Guru Dev was sharing to, to lead パブパーダシュリマドバーガタムイントラクション、イントラクション、イン,スト、えー、イントロダクション is so important. Every devotee should read and try to find out the absolute truth. This morning, g u r u d e v give us some kind of homework. Every devotee should read シュリマドバーガタムイントロダクション and market. Where is、えー、the absolute truth? means where is Radharani, the pleasure giving potency is there. So this, 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 uh, this, uh, bus also, uh, Gorang Sundra explained very, very nicely. So how to find,、uh, and how to feel this pleasure giving potency. Especially this is man. Sometimes we feel, you know, angerness of radical or sometimes g u r u d e v also become man. Sometimes we don't, you know, I don't like Guru Devs become angry. Some devotee may think, but actually great teaching is inside us. Radhika's case, great prema is behind this Radhika's. And,、uh, be, uh, more relationship is、uh, more become more tasteful. So therefore, this is,、uh, you know, we are always thinking material anger. But also here, g o r a n g s n a k e s p l a i n spiritual anger, man. So this is very interesting. So just, I, just add, radi radi. Radi radi, Mataji. I love you so much for your words. Thank you that you are helping us. You just remember me one thing that, like you said so nicely, without Radharani's mercy, no one can attain any form of Krishna. And the proof of that is everyone is saying Radha Krishna. Then they say they are worshippers in Vrindavan of Radha and Krishna. First love and then Krishna. But if someone wants to worship supreme personality of God, Godhead like Narayan in all temples, all worshippers, they are saying Lakshmi Narayan. They are not saying Narayan Lakshmi. They are always saying Lakshmi Narayan. Those who are worshipping Ram, our Hanuman, I don't know if he's here, they always say Sita Ram. So it, there is a deep meaning actually that only through love, mercy of female energy, giving pleasure potency, you can approach to your Desirable and loving Ishtadeva. Rukmini Nandana 
it's not said Krishna Rukmini. I just came out from the Bhava. But just to, to glorify our Radharani, who is the embodiment of Swarup Shakti, and especially in this form of Ladini Shakti. She is embodiment of love, and without love, nothing can happen. Even material world cannot exist without the presence of pure love. Thank you, Mutaraj. The Upanishads speak of Shreya, meaning Kalyana, or that which is good for us, and of Preya, that which we like. It's written, the saints accept that what is auspicious and beneficial, meaning spiritual and lasting happiness. And the fools accept that what they like most, temporary so, so this is happiness. The, so this is the perfect explanation why we cannot listen properly. Because we have our own conceptions, what we think that is good for us. But sadhus, they have another conception. And we need to properly listen and accept and practice their words because they are beneficial for our eternal existence. And when we accept this fact, then our listening will start to become Relishing from the heart. But if we have, and this is Shreya, but the prayer is what I think that is auspicious, Kalyani, for me. And this is illusion. And this is the symptom of conditioned nature. And it's not easy to become conditioned so. And for that we need, like Udavaji said, to surrender with full heart to those who are really thinking for our own benefit. Because if we always think what I like or I don't like, this is this prayer, it will not bring us ultimate benefit, ultimate grace. So every devotee, every one of us has to look in his heart. Am I practicing Shreya or am I practicing prayer? Or I'm mixing. I like this kind of Shreya, but I am very attached to this kind of prayer. So this is Sadhana Bhakti, up and down, left and right. But when the goal is fixed, deeply in the heart, not on the mental fl- platform, deeply in the heart, then it's completely natural to say, I don't care for my conceptions, thoughts, feelings. I want to surrender and tune myself to real Shreya, to words and feelings of Acharyas. And uh, what is welfare? Srila Ramananda Raya said, there is no other welfare than association with Krishna's devotees. Yes, this is the point. Sat Sangha. And how we can associate with this pure premika devotees if we are not connected with their hearts. We can have physical association. We can have mental association with them. It's all right. But the purpose of this kind of association is to establish deep connection heart to heart. Then association starts. Then real association starts. So we should really elaborate deeply with ourselves how I am connected with my beloved Gurudev, with other Vaishnavas, just externally, or I'm trying as much as I can to connect my heart with them. Because I have a faith, nishta, strong faith, then only that way reflection 
will from their hearts illuminate in my heart. So we can see here, sometimes devotees are talking, are saying it's too much tattva. Yes, but this is rasa tattva. This tattva is so important to properly put in our heart. Otherwise, we will be always in danger to go astray. Yes, this is tattva. Anandaji, Andakaji read just small part of Lila, of Radhika's man. But if we are situated in our base, and Gurudev is trying to also situate us in the base by reading different introductions and understanding these really introductions, then Rasa can properly be built and devotee can relish unlimitedly and freely. And at the same time, in the circle of protective devotees who are his only Sangha. From the viewpoint of Lila, Sri Radhika is indeed auspicious for the whole creation. Krishna creates the world through his Icha Shakti, desire potency. And what does he desire? He desires Radhika. Therefore, without Radhika's pleasure potency, the world cannot live. Without Krishna's desire, Radhika, there is no material world. Without the material world, there are no material bodies. Without material bodies, there is no sadhana, spiritual practice. Without sadhana, no prema. This Andakaji, read it again. Because this is the perfect circle, how really it works. Ataranga Bahiranga Shakti. Radhika, who is in charge actually for everything which is existing in spiritual world, but also Bahirangi Shakti, she is in charge for material world and everything in material world. And sometimes we can be confused with ignorance and say why this materialist world is like this. Why exists at all? Why the jivas has to suffer so much? Who made this material world so cruel like this? And now in this sentence, I will ask you, Andakaji, to read again. It's explain why this material world existing from the level of sadhu. Not from my level, but from the level. From the, from the viewpoint of Lila. From the viewpoint of Lila. That's the point. Because sadhus are always immersed in these loving pastimes. And they, we need that kind of vision. All other visions are illusion. <laughs> From the viewpoint of Lila, Sri Radhika is indeed auspicious for the full creation. Krishna creates the world through his Icha Shakti desire potency. And what is his desire? He desires Radhika. Therefore, without Radhika's pleasure potency, the world cannot live. Without Krishna's desire, personified by Radhika, there is no material world without the... Ma mm. Slowly. Now. Slowly. Now. Without the material world, there are no material bodies. Without material bodies, there is no sadhana, spiritual practice. And 
without sadhana there is no prema jai shiva this is the reason why material world is existing the different material bodies appears because and the reason why they are appearing is that only true body jiva can practice sadhana to be liberated from that body but that this is not the first reason first reason is that through this body by practicing sadhana attain prema without material body jiva cannot practice sadhana for desirable loving relationship full of prema this body is necessary material body that jiva slowly develop spiritual body and when it attains spiritual body she will attain this pure love and devotion and service and it's not easy to accept sometimes at least for me this true scientific true because the material nature can be so so gross aggressive then immediately in the soul appears desire for liberation but desire for liberation is not something which vaishnavas proclaim it's not something which is helpful for bhakti and it will not help jiva to really attain spiritual normal position in its spiritual body so krishna has icha this desire but who is fulfilling his desire who is fulfilling this his desire his love derek is wrote prema bhakti yaha hoite avidya yashanate only the prema and the vision of the those who has a prema can remove the ignorance from our consciousness we should have a faith in that if we don't have realization it's also right but we at least have to have a faith in that this faith will start to illuminate our heart and it's very interesting in the gora lila how this icha shakti usual krishna's desire which are so prominent everyone is acting according to his desire in gora lila the more important than icha shakti is a kripa shakti and this is the mercy and beauty of appearance of chaitanya mahaprabhu because he is in the mood of radharani and her kripa shakti is much more powerful than his icha shakti his desires he is becoming subdued by her kripa shakti usually things are going krishna has desires and all other shaktis which are also forms of radharani expansions of lila shakti and so on and so on are working to fulfill his desires but here in gora lila he is under control his icha shakti his it's under control of her kripa shakti and this is why she is kalyani and this kalyani mood of shimata radharani is most 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 prominent for us kali yuga people in the form of chaitanya mahaprabhu radhe radhe can you hear me yes i said now i i see you yes yeah i have a question um, because of prema the last days i think it was yesterday in the morning class what i understood gurudev said that the manjari's goal is not prema it's to increase feelings and so maybe one of the other advanced devotees here can say something who was there in the morning class or what is the difference then prema is also feeling but it's much higher or what did I, maybe i didn't understand not right you want to go on you please 
you want to ask you want to answer question this question uh janadaji please you can answer i don't know what's going what was there in the morning so recently guru dev was explain prema and actually manjari is goal is not prema i may say gopi's goal is prema prema for krishna but manjari's goal is radhika and ma- manjari is tasting sevarasa so means manjari is want to serve and wo- manjari could feel happiness if Radha Rani become happy or Radha Mohan become happy. They are meeting their pastime. So what's the difference of Manjari and Gopi Saki is man, uh, Gopi may have dua consciousness. They are dua consciousness. They have some, some dua consciousness. But Manjari has viewer consciousness. Just viewer, they are not, they are not doer. It seems do, they are doing, but just, just doing seba. They are not, they are not tinge of for their, their pleasure, own pleasure. Manjari is acting only for Radhika's pleasure, or may, maybe Radhika and Radhika's Mohan's pleasure. But a gopi may have personal desire. Of course, you know, Bhagatan mentioned gopi has no, no desire, but uh, they have some dual consciousness, dual consciousness, because they are using their body to please Krishna. So gopi may enter, wasaki may enter rasadira, gopi may La, Saki may enter Radha Kunda to enjoy with Krishna. But uh, Manjari never enter Rasarira. Or never enter Radha Kunda to enjoy with Krishna. So this is Guru Deva's explain, especially he stressed viewer consciousness. <laughs> if we want to become Manjari, we have to be a viewer. And then, then more interesting is Guru Deva saying, 24 hours, 24 seven in Manjari consciousness means no desire to enjoy anything. If we want to enjoy anything, then our consciousness is bereft from Manjari Bab. So this is very, very, you know, only someone who self-realized person could say in, in, in detail. So, Raseshwari ji is asking question. So, I, I would like to share what Guru Dev was now recently saying the secret of 24-7. Rade, rade. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Raseshwari, for this question. I hope that many things are much more clear now. I cannot remember where, but somewhere is written that even the gopis sakis, they have subtle, subtle, very, very deeply, deeply subtle, subtle, subtle desire for own happiness. Of course, in the lila, it's different meaning. And for the purpose of lila, it's like that. Ultimately, they are expansions of saki, uh, of Radharani. But for the sadakas who are trying to practice Saki Bhav, there are so many subtle desires present in the heart for own happiness and or own pleasure. But as I understand, the Manjari Bhav simply doesn't tolerate the whiff of personal desires, especially happiness and so on. And this is Bhavulas Rat. No one can have the bubble asrati without slightest, slightest of the slightest desire for his own happiness or for his own distress. Because this kind of devotee is Radharani's shadow. And no one can be in the position of shadow with his own 
slightest, slightest independent desire for enjoyment. So I just gave something which came to my heart. But I also feel that Gurudev is warning us, plus like a sadakas, be careful if you practice Manjari Bhav. You should be very watchful to your inner self. If you are not watchful to your inner self, how you will be watchful to the Lila? You will be immediately take active role. But this is not Manjari Bhav. So practicing of watchfulness is starting in Sadaka Desh. Because Bhakti simply is not lagu, is not cheap. Rati, rati, go.